Jess, what is our first main topic today? Our first topic comes from Baron Tilson. Hi, John and crew. So I never heard of the Idris Elba movie Beast until I heard you mention it last week. So I went to check it out on Thursday night and I had a really good time. It's not winning any Oscars for screenplay or anything like that. But by the time the movie was over, I found myself having to catch my breath a little. Did you have a chance to go see it? And if you did, what did you think of it? All right. Thanks a lot for saying that in, Baron. And yeah, I have been kind of excited about this movie. I'm a big, big fan of the Michael Douglas, Val Kilmer movie, The Ghost and the Darkness. It's actually, it's like one of my favorites. I, I love that movie so much about a couple of lions, whatever. And when I saw this, I thought, oh, this is kind of like a take on that a little bit. Didn't get a lot of marketing. Didn't get a lot of press. And the last I checked, it had like a 70 something percent. So a good critic rating, but you know, nothing mind blowing. It didn't get into the eighties or anything like that. So I went to go watch it and I, the, this is how I'll sum it up. The movie absolutely challenges you to stretch what you consider to be believable uh, <laughs> at, at several points in the movie while trying to maintain a sense of verisimilitude and realness to it. Right. <laughs> but, oh my God, the tension in this movie, like my buttocks was fatigued <laughs> by the end of this movie from just being ah, like, like w this lion who, by the way, the lion's all CG. And could you tell with a discerning eye that this is clearly a CG lion? Yes. But I don't know that I've ever seen one done better. Ooh. Like for what is not a super high budget film, the lions in this look real good. Like really good. Especially there's a scene where Charlton Copley, who of course from District 9, who I like very much, and he was Mad Murdoch in the A-Team. There's a scene where he's actually interacting with a couple of lions. And I'm like, like you can tell like when a character, even in She-Hulk, right? If there's a scene where Jennifer in her human form hugs Bruce in his Hulk form and you can sort of tell the yeah it's it's a little but when he's like interacting with these lines I'm like that looks really good like I was really impressed by that but again like the story is kind of it's a basic story right it's Idris Elba has two daughters he and his wife had separated and shortly after they separated the, the mom died Idris Elba's ex died now he's trying to reconnect with his daughters he takes them to South Africa where he met their mother and uh, they meet up with their old best friend uh, with Copley there. And they go out onto safari and things go wrong, of course, which is they always do. And that's basically the premise. And that's it. It's just them trying to survive uh, and get out of there with this lion coming after them. And why is the lion after them? Well, that's one of the things that's going to challenge you to stretch believability a little bit. <laughs> is it like Jaws the Revenge? That, I was personal? about to say there's a little <laughs> bit of Jaws the Revenge in there. <laughs> Uh, okay. But still, that notwithstanding, it's it's a thrilling movie. Uh, I, again, the tension they build up in it is always top notch. As they're playing a little bit of pardon the pun, cat and mouse with the lion, um, you, you're you're like clenching on your seat. And by the end of it, I was like catching my breath a little bit. And it's like, yeah, listen. Any the the person who wrote in is absolutely right. Any Academy Awards coming in this future? No. Uh, maybe for effects, I don't know. Uh, but for writing and stuff like that, no. But Idris Elba was fantastic in it. The the his the girls who play his daughters are fantastic in it. Uh, I gotta say, is it gonna end up in my top ten of the year? No. But I think you would do well to serve yourself by going out to see if you're looking for something to watch tonight, whatever. I don't think going to see Beast is gonna be a waste of your time at all. I had a good time. Have you had any expectations for this one, Chris? I think this looks really fun. I've been fighting with Logan about this one, where he's like, the more trailers I see for this, the less I get interested in it. And I'm like, I am the exact opposite. I I won't skip a booking.com commercial because of Idris Elba. I love that man. I think he's so talented and so wonderful. The girls do look incredible in this too. I mean, just the clips we've seen too, including some of the stuff from CinemaCon where they're just like, just haggard and crying and trying to save their lives and also dealing with poachers and all kinds of things. I think this looks really interesting. Rob, where's your expectation a little bit? Uh, you know what I have to say, like Chris, I really like the trailer. I like you, give me an animal attack movie, I'll watch it. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was a kid, there was a movie called Grizzly that came out and it had like this, the movie poster has this giant grizzly bear and Day of the Animals directed by William Girdler who directed the Manitou. I mean, give me that. Kingdom of the Spiders, oh, insect movies, I guess it's not. And like you, Ghost sweet. in the Darkness rules. Yeah, if you guys movie. haven't seen Ghost in the Darkness, it's on Blu-ray. You can borrow it if you like. But people misunderstand. It's not Ghost in the Darkness. Right. 
It's the ghost and the darkness. And the darkness. It's you got it absolutely ghost got to and check the it darkness. out. Anyway, guys, question is for you. Have you had a chance to run out and see Beast yet? Have you had any interest in it? I, I really do think you'll have a good time if you check it out. Whatever you guys think, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts there. We want to take a second to thank the sponsor of today's video, Manscaped. Now, guys, you know I love Manscaped. You've heard me go on and on about the Lawnmower 4.0 and mm, that body wash. I love it so much. And so we got to ask, guys, have you started your spring cleaning yet? The carpets need cleaning, the drapes need dusting, and your lawn needs mowing, gentlemen. And you guys know Manscaped is more than just one product. They have a whole lineup of products to help you guys feeling, smelling, and looking your best. And so so Manscaped is proud to present to you the Performance Package 4.0, which is the only tool that you need to keep your boys looking, smelling, and feeling good this spring. Now, to start off with, you get the Lawnmower 4.0. Guys, we have talked about this. What is wrong with us? Why have we for so long been using these terrible tools that were never meant for cutting our hair down there? The razor clipper things on our electric razors. That's barbaric, guys. You need the Lawnmower 4.0. And then there's the Weed Whacker. You guys have heard our own Ray Aura talk about this thing. He loves using it to get that hair in your nose and the ear hair. And then they offer lots of other stuff like the Crop Preserver. It's an anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer. The Crop Reviver. It's a spray-on toner for your balls. And of course, they've got the perfect grooming tool for your face with the Plow 2.0, the perfect razor for the finest shave on that face. So guys, get 20% off plus free shipping with the code CAMPIA. That's C-A-M-P-E-A -E at manscaped.com. That's 20% off in free shipping with the promo code CAMPIA at manscaped.com. It's time to throw out your old hygiene habits and upgrade your life.